There is a secret version of Windows XP that you can still download directly from Microsoft, but it's a bit tricky to find unless you know exactly what you're looking for. And in some ways, it's the best version of Windows XP they ever made. So today we're going to download it, install it on the most Windows XP computer I own, and take a look at this hidden gem of an OS. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy living on the bleeding edge of 25 year old obsolete hardware, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Windows XP was first released to manufacturing in August of 2001, and it was replaced by Windows Vista in November 2006. But we don't talk about Windows Vista. The final XP service pack was released in 2008, and Microsoft removed the ability to download Windows XP from Microsoft.com somewhere around 2014, when extended support officially ended. Or so we were led to believe, because in reality, Microsoft actually kept updating Windows XP through 2019, including a really nice update to its visual style. And you can still download this version of Windows XP direct from Microsoft.com. So this is it, the final version of Windows XP. Of course, it's called Embedded POS Ready 2009, but it is Windows XP Professional. What's interesting is it says it's Windows XP Professional with a smaller footprint, not quite sure what that means, and specific features for point of sale computers. So what I'm really interested to see is can we just download this ISO and install it on an old Windows XP era machine and have a normal Windows experience? Can we install the drivers for the computer? Can we install games and how do they run? Well, we're gonna download this, burn it to a CD and try it. There is nothing quite like the aesthetics of the early 2000s. Fun colors in Windows XP and translucent electronics. There's just nothing like it, which is one of the reasons I'm such a big fan of nothing tech. Transparency is nothing tech's signature aesthetic, and I love the killer design of the nothing ear A for that reason alone. But there is a lot more to love about these earbuds. I mean, they sound fantastic. 24-bit high-res audio with LDAC. Clear, rich, and punchy. These really make all the 2000s emo I listen to sound amazing, along with enhanced bass for those crab core breakdowns. And they somehow last for up to 9.5 hours of playback with noise cancellation off. And that active noise cancellation is great, up to 45 decibels. I honestly can't believe they got the price down to just $89 for these things. But wait, there's more. Right now you can get these for up to 33% off. That's 59 bucks. And that is a pretty incredible value for a pretty incredible piece of tech. So if you're in the market for a great pair of wireless earbuds, check out the Nothing Ear A. Link down in my description below. And thanks again, Nothing Tech, for sponsoring today's video. All right, Dell Dimension 2400, what is inside of you? All right, we've got a Pentium 4 under this really rather cool shroud that directs airflow around the cooler. We have a spinning hard drive, which is not connected. I must have swiped the IDE cable out of this at one point. Three unpopulated PCI slots. And the thing that everybody freaking hated about this particular model of Dell, an unpopulated AGP slot. Yeah, there was really no upgrade path for a graphics card on this machine, meaning it was pretty much relegated to office use or other boring pursuits. But I think that also makes it a great candidate for checking out the ultimate office operating system, Windows XP. And I don't know what state this spinning hard drive is in, so we're just gonna chuck in a SATA SSD on an adapter to convert it to IDE, 250 gigabytes of Samsung storage. And we'll just leave this dangling right there. Perfect. That might be the best cable management I've ever done. Of course, we need one of these Dell LCDs that used to be everywhere. Non-matching Dell QuietKey keyboard because that's how we roll. And of course, the crimpet mouse. Oh no, I have discovered a tragedy. There we go. Good as new, like it never happened. And here is our install CD for Windows XP, but it's actually POS Ready 2009. 
Uh, hello? That's all right, we can make him work with a little bit of this and a little bit of this. Aha, I'm sure it's fine. And here we are booting into what looks like a pretty standard Windows installer. Yeah, check it out, Windows XP. I told you this was Windows XP. All right, welcome to the Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009 Setup Wizard. Mouse works, interactive setup sounds good. And here is where you enter your license key. You can use the evaluation copy within evaluation license key, or you can enter your authentic product key for a full version at this juncture. Assuming, of course, you legitimately have a genuine product key. Do not pirate software. All right, name, organization, no additional storage drivers, I guess. Yeah, there's our SSD. And we'll delete whatever was on there before. Create a partition. Looks good, what? Uh, it said failed to create partition, but then it created a partition. Hmm. I'm sure it's fine. All right, NTFS, default. Volume label will be Dell. We'll do a quick format. Uh, seems fine. United States, Eastern Standard Time, of course. That's the best standard time there is. Yeah, typical install, looks good to me. Computer name here will be Dell POS. POS, of course, stands for point of sale and nothing else. A strong, secure password. That's definitely not just the word action in all lowercase. That would be insecure. You must enter a strong password. Six letters long and contain character, what? Oh, I hate it when they force you to do stuff. Action retro with some capitalization in there. Oh my God, come on. Must contain uppercase letter, lowercase letter, digit. Oh my God, okay. Action Retro 1. Action Retro 1. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Install. Hopefully jump cut to install complete. Ah, look at that. Setup will restart the computer in four seconds. No, do it now. By gum, I think we've got it. Oh yeah, start Windows XP. Our fresh install of not XP. Oh yeah, first boot agent is doing stuff. Here we are, our fresh install of not Windows XP. We are administrator with a strong and secure password that was forced on us. Now look at that. Right off the bat, you see the huge difference in theming. Instead of garish green, we have a nice subdued blue, a more professional Windows XP professional. Yes, I know the display is set to a low resolution. Can we uh, up that a bit? We cannot. So we're at 640 by 480, but that's okay because something I really want to see, I just so happen to have the restore disk with all the drivers for our Dell 2400. Can we just pop this in and install all the drivers as if this is regular old Windows XP? All right, so far so good. Yes, we will install the resource CD. It's detecting hardware and it found it, so. First off, let's get the video driver installed. Extract. All right, moment of truth. Can we install this driver? We can, look at that. The driver worked with no issues. Yeah, go ahead and restart. And one restart later, we have a much better resolution. Oh uh, yeah, would you look at that? Looking good. Might as well add some nice Harman Kardon speakers into the mix and install the audio drivers. All right, next up, audio drivers. Yeah, looking good so far. Oh, first issue. For some reason, I can't find the ksuser.dll. Oh, but it's right there in system 32. That's weird. Again, ks.sys. That's oh, right there in drivers. So I don't know why this can't find these drivers. If we manually select them, it seems to work. All right, let's restart and see if we have glorious sound. We do! The sultry sounds of Windows XP. Now I guess let's try to install the rest of these drivers. So jump cut to 
Hopefully they all install. All right, everything is installed. I did have to point it at DLL file locations a couple of times again, but all in all, not really a big hassle and everything seems to work. We are even online via ethernet. So there's a couple of things that I wanna try on here. Of course I wanna try gaming and I wanna see if we can just install Windows XP games and if they'll just work. I also wanna try web browsing on here. There's a really cool Windows XP web browser called Supermium, which is a modern-ish up-to-date browser that works on Windows XP and is the only modern browser for Windows XP. And I also found a program that I wrote as a child, a South Park tribute application. We're gonna see if we can get this running on here too. But first, the most important thing, this background isn't cutting it. What other options do we have? None. <laughs> well, I mean, technically we, for some reason, have this or this, but that's okay. I've loaded up a USB stick with our precious, precious bliss. Just drag this right to the C drive as you do. Oh yeah, look at that. Now that's the Windows XP I know and love. Man, I love this color scheme too. It's so calming. Let's see, what's installed on here by default? I assume nothing, since this is intended for a point of sale system. No games, we have notepad. Yep, good old notepad. And we have Internet Explorer which goes to great pains to say no add-ons. Look at that. The most boring possible Internet Explorer. Yeah, but it still works. Look at that. There's good old frog find. All right, let's try to install Carmageddon on this thing. Carmageddon 2. All right, install Shockwave, sure. Oh yeah, there it is. Good old Carmageddon installer. Yep, install game. Would you like assistance? I don't need no assistance. I'm an installation professional. Oh, uh, there's my guy. Hopefully jump cut to install complete or something interesting happens. Oh, look at that. Not a problem at all. We have Carmageddon. Carmageddon 2. Oh yeah. Ooh, those are some chunky graphics. <laughs> well, that's not a great sign. Well, switch to software rendering because I think we hit the limitations of this thing's anemic graphics card. Mm -hmm. But we are gaming <laughs> on Windows for point of sale systems. Oh yeah, good old Carmageddon. Don't remember the controls. Well, that was fun. And I've just installed Supermium which is quite a cool project, an up-to-date web browser for Win32, Windows XP, and Windows 7. Yeah, quite responsive. Yeah, look at that. Carmageddon 2. My clock is behind. Oh my God. I just ate in time. Oh, it thinks it's December 2003. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's modern Google with all of its cruft and bloat. Rendering pretty darn well here in Supermium for Windows XP. I don't think I mentioned, but we only have 512 megs of RAM in this thing. Let's see what our memory usage looks like. Well, we're using 100% CPU to render this web page, but only 347 megs of RAM. That's actually kind of impressive. Dare we try YouTube on this thing? Absolutely no way will it be playable, but it might be funny. Yeah, chugging this poor Pentium 4 along at 100% CPU usage. Wait, does this actually have a gig of RAM in there? I think it might. Page unresponsive, as is surprising to no one. All right, YouTube was a dumb idea. Let's try Poofscape, my fictional web browser from the universe of South Park that I tried to bring to life as a young child with Visual Basic. Drag this right to the C drive. <laughs> Look at all these wave files. Cannot find VB Run 300. Oh man. All right, thanks to the magic of a USB stick, I have found VB Run 300.dll. Let's try Poofscape. What are you talking about? It's right there. It's right here. Oh my God. <laughs> well, that's Poofscape. 
I was a literal child when I made this. It's mostly dumb jokes. Oh my god! You've got mail. You bastard! And hilarious sound effects. I spent quite a lot of time on this, but the best part though, here's the absolute best part when you close it. Hey you squatty ass What the f is wrong with you? You must be some kind of It screams at you. Excellent. All right, well, it wouldn't be an action retro video if we didn't try to do something completely cursed to this thing. As you remember, the big complaint with this system is that they didn't populate the AGP slot in here. And in fact, this chipset doesn't support it. You only have PCI slots, which severely limited your options for video cards. There really weren't any good PCI video cards that you could install in this thing and turn it into a gaming machine. However, we live in the era of this thing. It's a PCI to PCIe adapter. So we can try to stick a PCI video card in here. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do is put it on a riser. We'll just stick it in like this. Yep, that's fine. Of course, this old Dell power supply doesn't supply PCIe power, which this needs. So we're gonna go the tried and true and definitely not cursed method of a whole second power supply with its own power supply switch. Yes, that fire extinguisher is not just for decoration. Okay, I have the secondary power supply connected to this switch. Power is now applied to the video card. What I'm gonna do is leave VGA plugged into the motherboard VGA port. We're gonna start this up and see if we can install drivers for that ATI Radeon. And if it will even be recognized by our point of sale Windows XP. Well, it hasn't crashed or burst into flames. Your computer might be at risk. I don't care. Let's see, control panel, classic view. Let's look in our device manager and see what the computer thinks we have installed. It doesn't see anything new. All right, it would help if the adapter didn't fall out of the PCI slot. Let's just hook this on here so it kind of stays in place. We'll try that again. Ooh, now she's spinning up. Boy, this thing puts out a lot of air. Jeez. Miraculously, it still has not caught on fire or exploded or melted down. Oh, it found new hardware. <laughs> oh, goodness. What did you find? Windows has finished installing new devices. What did you find? Don't tell me it just figured out a driver for that thing. All right, control panel, system, go into device manager. Aha, it found a PCI to PCI bridge. That makes sense. That's the adapter. What about display adapters? No, it does not see the display adapter. However, maybe a quick restart. God, I love that sound. All right, let's just try to install legacy AMD drivers. Oh, I found a video controller. New controller VGA compatible. Oh my God. <laughs> Is this actually freaking working? Oh good, setup failed to run installation. Makes sense, I guess. Hmm, I dare say it's not happy. Oh my God, it's freaking working, look at that. It found the Radeon X1900 and installed, oh no. Windows cannot install, oh. Well, not every stupid idea is a good idea, but they're all stupid. Well, Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009. It really is just Windows XP Professional in a fancy suit. And you can really just install it on a Pentium 4 and do normal Windows XP stuff with it. And uh, not normal Windows XP stuff. And I can't believe you can still just download this from Microsoft.com. But in any event, that'll do it for today's video. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.